back to your point about these substitution analyses. I think these are really incredible studies. And there's these clear benefits for consumption of legumes and nuts and seeds over fish and over red meat and over white meat. Yes, definitely. Um, fish sometimes is a bit can can change from study to study. But on the whole, you see that trend as you consume more plant protein, there's a benefit. Um, I think some people might push back on on that and hear us talking about that and say, yes, but who are those people that are eating more plant protein? And are they just adopting healthy behaviors across their entire lifestyle? Are they exercising more? Are they smoking less? Are they drinking less alcohol? How can we be sure that it is the plant protein that's leading to their better health and not the fact that they're just living a generally healthy lifestyle. I've heard people who are like keto and paleo and carnivore advocates give that argument, but it really does not hold water. You know, these, some of these studies have like 20 nutritional researchers on board. These are some of the top um, scientific nutritional researchers in the world, and they control for all those factors. And it's not that people, so they're comparing like non-smoking and non-coffee, you know, they they really have gone into incredible detail um, going after con confounding variables. And then we have corroboration from one study to another, including the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2, corroborating those other studies, when Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2 do a very good job with people not smoking and not drinking and people having healthy behaviors, even that are eating a small amount of animal products compared to none or eating fish compared to none. So we have a, we have a lot of data on that and on the confounding variables. And what about if, if someone pushed back? I enjoy arguing for the other position, <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, what if someone pushed back and said, I hear what you're saying, Dr. Furman, but the, the animal foods that I'm eating are not the same as what people in those studies would be eating. You know, in those studies, they might be eating ultra-processed meats or fast food or burgers. That's also an argument they give, which is not true either. That's totally untrue. Because it's true in this country, there's a lot of the meats are commercially made in, in large factory farms. But as you know from being from Australia, most of the meat they eat there is, is grass-fed and pasture-raised. And, so mo and most of the studies around the world that have where the studies are raising more wild and pasture-raised and animals do not show a difference in outcomes. They New Zealand's this, another one. Yes, New Z you know, so they don't show a difference. If that was, if they had some data to support that theory, that would be great. But it's not true. The the, the detrimental effects are the same, whether which whichever, um, whichever study you look at, wherever the meat comes from, you know. And it's not the fact that the animal product has antibiotics or lower fatty acids. It's the fact that driving high levels of animal protein in a human body promotes IG levels of IGF-1 and cellular replication that are unfavorable for human lifespan and also increase risk of cancer. Excess growth in a fully grown body is not favorable. We know from all species of animals tested that caloric restriction, that, that excess nutrition leads to acceleration of aging. Too much food leads to acceleration of aging. And we're talking here about the effect of excess protein the body doesn't need leading to acceleration of aging. When you get, it doesn't matter where the animal product is from, when you have excess protein, especially biologically complete protein you didn't need, the body doesn't just store it as fat, it converts it into hormones that promote growth. And that growth promoting effect, plus the fact that it changes the bacteria in the, in the gut that produce more biological- What's uh, excess protein? Like how would you define that? And, and do you think that that's different in the context of a sedentary person who's not exercising versus someone who's exercising requires more recovery and repair? Yes, but minimally. Let me, that's, a, that's also a good question that involves a thoughtful answer, but let's um, talk about that for a minute. One thing is that we can eat a diet to try to maximize growth in humans for extra athletic performance and size. And I'm suggesting that maximizing performance and size is not the same as maximizing longevity. That Trade-off. As a trade-off, correct. And so, yes, it's true that with more bodybuilding, more musculature, you can keep your body fat lower, and you can utilize the protein to go to muscular use, which will make it safer than a person who's a couch potato eating the excess protein. That's not going to go to muscular development. It'll go to pushing a tumor development. So even though you, that argument has a point and some validity to it, it's still not good to eat protein to, to maximize muscle growth. Because we know, for example, that, those, that the occupation with the shortest lifespan 
in North America are linebackers on football teams who eat to big to get big, so they can do their better at their profession. I don't think they eat a very healthy diet, though. And they may take steroids too. I don't even know. But largeness. I think is, they get tested. Yeah, you know so. But largeness is not the criteria for good health. And the human body, generally, we know that um, through all animal studies, that the animals that are un slightly underfed, that are thinner and not allowed to get to their maximum growth, live the longest. Yeah. You know. Can and, I push back a little bit on those experiments? Sure. I totally agree with that. Yeah. My one problem with extrapolating from those studies is those mice are their growth is restricted, sexual maturation is delayed. They're in a, a cage, not out in the wild like we are, so they don't really need a robust immune system, a We're sex talking drive. About primate studies too, though, not rodent studies. Right. There's some there's some primate evidence as well, but I think it's a little bit different to a human who's out navigating the wild world to a, a, a rodent or a primate even that's in a cage? Mm, well, not really because I don't think that's... A, because we have the same studies on humans too. We know that extra body mass and body fat slows, um, accelerates aging and shortens lifespan. We know that being on the side of the lean side extends human lifespan too. And there's no such thing as a healthy overweight person. And we know that even larger muscles can slow, can enhance, can accelerate aging. And we can measure that today. Right. We can measure telomeres. We I'm can talking more about protein defects. restriction. Yes. Not so much. I agree with you on the, on the calorie restriction side right, of things right. totally.